Um, and just for this session, I'm going to be multitasking a little bit here. So I'll be admitting people, answering questions and running through the presentation. So if you do have a question, just bear with me while I juggle a few different things around. Um, but thanks for coming back for the, this afternoon session. Um, our session today, now as a wrap up for, for today, is the buyer journey, uh, which is a workshop where we're actually getting our brain into the mindset of a consumer and, and how they think around when they purchase and what their behaviour looks like online. Um, we might sort of get started and then I'll, as people sort of come in, we'll, we'll just trickle and let them back in. Um, but the worksheet portion here for this presentation will probably happen towards the end um, as we sort of get going here. So at, at any point, if you have any questions at all, just feel free to jump in there. Yep. Um, so what we're covering in this workshop is what the buyer journey is and how as a tool it can provide your business with important insights to shape your marketing content and influence the decision making process. So things in particular that we're going to be covering is the buyer journey, what it is, uh, the race model and mapping the buyer journey, uh, some tips and then a bit of a summary. So as we sort of break through some of these out there, with the other workshops that, that you all have been attending, you'll start to see how all of this comes together to make a more cohesive plan and action into what we're doing. Um, so I guess out of here, some key takeaways that might be is that you're able to go ahead and map some of your potential customers or buyers uh, that interact with you on a day-to-day -day basis um, and allow you to understand how they may interact with you so you can better improve your communication to those people. So I guess um, a bit of a, a stat to get started here is that 67% of the buyer's decision is complete before a buyer even reaches out to sales. So before someone has clicked purchase or before someone has contacted someone and said, I'd like to do this, they 67% of those people have already made the decision to take that action, uh, which means that a lot of the decision making has happened well and truly before the sales process um, the actual transactional process of the sale has occurred. So the majority of your customers are finding the information they need to make their purchasing decision on their own. Uh, they will have made up their minds long before they ever reach out to you or choose to reach out to your competitor. Um, so you're meeting them whether in their exploration or the information gathering phase. Uh, so you need to make sure that you're the one providing them with everything they need to make the right decision. Uh, this is your opportunity to provide everything they need to make the decision to buy from you. So in our buyer journey here, what we're what we're talking about and what we're looking at is if you're the person that's providing them with the information that leads them to make a decision, there's a higher chance that they will make that final purchase with you. Any questions so far? That's good. Keep on tracking here. So the buyer journey and the race model, um, we'll sort of go through this and we'll unpack this in more detail. Uh, we have covered the, the, the funnel before, but we're going to cover the funnel again, talking about it in particular around the buyer journey. So there are four key stages of the buyer journey and each of these stages relate to a position within the marketing funnel. So you might hear exploration or you might hear someone say the top of funnel. At this point, someone's just had a, a spark of a thought of an idea that may lead them down the line to a purchase. So when you have an interest in something, it would typically be the first thing that you would look for. So you might be browsing on social media uh, and when you're in social media, uh, you might see something for the first time and you might click on it. Uh, you're at the top of the funnel. You're just getting uh, being made aware of what is going on. Um, other people may go through Google search, for example, and they may go on there and they may search for something and they may see an ad for something different and they may click on that ad. And again, they've just had this whole new awareness that something exists out there that they can interact with or they can do something with, whether they purchase, uh, whether that's a product or whether that's a service or a lifestyle event or an activity. After that, you get to this middle of funnel sort of um, area, which is the decision making process. And in decision making, this is where a lot of the research is conducted. So if we look at some big transactional processes that people might do, 
Um, and say, for example, we've got a, a fishing experience again on Lake Tinaru, which I've used as an example, but there's five providers that might do that. Um, they may go and research and search to find out who else is offering something similar. And they may read about all of the features and benefits of that, that other company. They may learn about what sets them apart. And in the process, that person will start to make a decision around which provider they would go with. And they'll have reasons in their head that they've determined as to why. After they've done their reasoning, they may during this stage as well, if it's an activity or it's an event, they may talk to other people that they'd like to invite before they make that final decision. They may say, hey, on the weekend, would you like to do this? And you'll see they go and collect some people, some information, and then they'll go and make a, a booking as a, as a collective group. So typically this middle of funnel stage is where the content that you might have on your website or on your Facebook page or, or where you're sharing the information allows that person to have the information they need to make a decision. And typically you're trying to give them that information so they make that purchasing with you. So what we get down to the next stage is the purchase part of it, which is where the transactional format goes. So if the exploration was great, the decision making, we gave them enough in there to make a decision and then they purchase with us, we're really happy. If the purchase again was say for a product, um, they may ask, hey, does the product meet my expectation, exceed my expectation? Do they love the product so much that they would become an advocacy for the product? For a service, they might come back and say, how was the service? It was a flawless experience. We had the most amazing time. Uh, we had the best experience. The, the service was amazing. The staff were incredible. And then the ultimate out of that is at the bottom of the funnel, they advocate. So they become your salesperson. So the idea here with advocacy is they may share a, your Facebook page. They may share a promotion you have. Uh, they may make a comment out to all of their friends saying, if you're ever in this region, go and do this. It was amazing. Advocacy is pretty much the ultimate goal that you can set during a buyer journey. You know you've done really well when your buyer becomes a huge advocate for what you're doing. Some examples of um, advocacies and advocates that you might see uh, that you might already be familiar with. Um, when you look at uh, people's behaviours with their clothing, some people may be very brand specific. Um, they're advocates for those brands. They think that brand is absolutely fantastic. So they continue to purchase that brand. They represent that brand. Uh, people are more in line, inclined to hear from them to purchase that brand if that's the case. Uh, an advocate we see at all different types of levels in our day-to-day -day activities, which have come back from a purchasing decision. Another um, product that is quite common that has a lot of advocacy that you hear a lot about, um, and the advocacy has also become a bit of a debate, is whether you're Apple or Android, whether you have an iPhone or you have an Android phone. Uh, and you see that people that are diehard Apple users, they're big advocates for Apple. They love the platform, they share the platform, they, they talk about the platform, they're constantly trying to advocate that that product is amazing. So each stage in this process of the buyer journey has specific types of content and tactics that suit it to optimize the level of influence in helping the lead progress through the buyer journey. Uh, so if you imagine this as the as a funnel at top being exploration, what you're trying to do is you're trying to drive them down to that purchasing decision and down to that adv advocacy level, getting them to the bottom of the funnel. In addition to content types and tactics, there's also specific metrics uh, to measure success at each stage. So if you've got your Facebook advertising going on, you've got your website analytics happening, and we've got things like that happening in the background, you're able then to understand at which level the funnel is being successful. Uh, what we'll do is we'll jump a little bit more into the funnel here and just have a bit of a, a deeper dive into what it looks like. Uh, so what we've got here in the buyer journey, um, and I'll just have to have a quick admit here. There we go. Brenda, have we got you back? Yep, I'm here. Yep. Just yeah, took out the modem, but it's all started again. Ah, that's good. So where we're at, Brenda, is we're just covering back onto uh, the buyer journey with the funnel again. Um, which you would have seen in one of our previous presentations. Yep. So the buyer journey here is the funnel, um, and this is where the RACE um, acronym comes from, which is the Reach, Act, Convert and Engage. 
Now, we talk about this a lot in our digital marketing for tactics, but we also know that this reflects heavily on what the buyer journey is in particular. So exploration, when someone is at that awareness exploration stage, we know that the buyer in the in the buyer journey, they're not sure what they need. Um, they're, they're not sure if they've got an interest in the product and they're not sure then if they're gonna purchase. So that awareness stage is always a good starting point where you're trying to attract a customer. So some key measures there is the audience volume, uh, the audience quality and the audience value and cost. Uh, so some areas in which you might do this and to give another tangible experience back uh, to the Apple and Android sort of um, example there, people uh, that are advertising for iPhone, for example, uh, and we know that it's a model that keeps on updating year on year on year. Um, they're currently at the uh, iPhone 13, uh, which is many iterations of a single product. So at the start of their awareness is they're making people aware that there's a new model coming uh, and then they're telling people as to why it's such a great model. So we can see that to help people make the decision making that action stage to prompt interaction, subscribes and leads, they start talking about all of the benefits of the product and why it's better than the last model and what makes it stand out so that people are already making a decision in their head that they would like to make that purchase. By the time they get to the actual sales transaction stage, this purchase stage, they've already made the decision that they were gonna buy that product. Uh, and most typically that's what we see. So we know that nearly 70% of all people have already made that purchasing decision before they get to the purchasing point. After that, as you can see, we know that people that love their phones and love their devices, they become huge advocates about it. So if we were to move this back to a different business model and say it's a tourism driven uh, business in the tablelands, um, the exploration would be when people are looking for activities to do in the tablelands that we've made them aware that this activity exists, that it's an amazing activity, uh, that it's a lot of fun. In the decision making phase, we might tell them what they can do, who, who it's suitable for, how much time it takes, that it's cost effective, um, when to come and do the activity. So you're helping them plan, you're helping them make a, a form in a decision as a buyer. Um, from that then, for them to make a purchase, they know what they're getting, how they're going to get there, what they're going to be doing, and they're comfortable with the cost, and then they purchase it. The final push here, though, in that type of environment, when you have someone that might be having a tourism type event, is the advocacy. So the delivery of the product has to be at a high standard as well. So if the product is an experiential product where someone is coming and they're having an experience in region or on site, you want to make sure that they've had an absolutely fantastic time. That way when they leave they become advocates and I think that point five the engage and the advocacy level that really is the ultimate complement in the buyer journey. If you have a customer that's come through and they're advocating they said I heard about this from my friend or you've heard about a referral you know that you've had a really successful buyer journey that's been implemented with that person. Um, so if we have a look a little bit around some of the measures on this this one, we've got the audience volume, audience quality and audience value and cost at the top in the exploration stage. Um, with key measures for decision making, you've got the leads or lead conversion rate, how long they've been on your website, the time on site, whether they subscribe, liked or shared. So we know that in this decision making stage that sometimes a lead is a form inquiry. Um, it's not so much that they've made a purchase, but they're making an inquiry to maybe download some information about a product or an offering, um, or they may have downloaded a brochure or a flyer that's coming up for an event. So you know that you're helping them make a decision. The purchase point is really that sales um, process where you actually get the transaction where money goes into the bank and where we're looking at revenue and profit and we're looking at the order value or the purchase value and things like that. And when it gets to advocacy, if it was a product that they come back and purchase another product, if it was an activity that they've either referred you on or that they've had repeat purchase, their lifetime value has increased. So we hope that they're so happy with the service and the product that they've received as a buyer that they would continue to buy that again. And you would know yourself when you look at some of the products and things that you do in your life when you make purchases or when you go out and you make decisions in your buyer journey as a person, what are some of those things that allow you to repurchase? Um, was the quality of the product the, the standout for you? Um, or were you spending a particular high value on something to make sure that the quality was good so you don't have to continue to purchase that product down the line? Uh, there's many sort of driving forces in the buyer journey, but advocacy is ultimately where you want to land. 
if we keep going here, there's many ways to market to your customers and all marketing channels push a potential customer through the buyer journey and eventually to purchase. So different channels work better at different buyer stages, uh, which is why omni-channel, so multi-channels or integrated channels. And when we're saying um, omni-channel, we're saying that you might use Facebook and Instagram and Google advertising at the same time. So not just being on one, you might be deployed across a variety of channels. While that marketing works well, as you're able to reach your customer at different stages of their own journeys. Um, so what we find is we'll, we'll discuss in the next diagram and identify what digital media channels your business could leverage and the types of tactics that suit each one. But what we do find is that when people make a, a buyer journey online or through a digital format, what happens is they may start on one platform where they saw the awareness, but they may not convert at that platform. They may go to a different platform where they make the final purchasing decision. So people, when they use their own browsing habits, they're not just uh, one device or one platform wonders. They're using multiple. So people are using Google. They could be using Bing. Uh, they, they could be on Instagram or TikTok, for example, and, and they could be on, on Facebook. And so they're using all of these platforms to give them information as to what they're going to do in their journey when they go to purchase. Uh, so if we have a look here, this is a pretty... Um, pretty detailed sort of buyer journey uh, and race model for us to talk through. And we'll go through what a couple of all these are. And you might recall in the previous session that um, we'll look at the color code here where you've got paid media, own media, earn media and experience. So paid media is where you're actually purchasing for the advertising place. Uh, the owned media is things like your content marketing. So we're talking your blog or your website uh, and your search engine optimization, which I can dig into a little bit more detail as well. The earned media is things where you've earned ranking. So SEO falls into earned media a little bit as well. But we've also got in the earned media things like PR and media uh, and uh, free influences and things like that. And experience is how do people experience um, what is going on? So is your experience really good? Has things happened quite well? So if we start on the left side of the screen, the reach, which is really that top of the funnel, that's where we're looking at that awareness aspect, our reach, where you're targeting your biggest audience. That's where you see a lot of people as, you, as you're pushing material out there. Things that live in that sort of space is things like television or radio and print, uh, which would be quite familiar. Uh, events can also fall into that, where people are attending an event, which is where they see awareness. Uh, where we look at display advertising, so things where you're on news.com.au and you see advertisers with visual advertising on those websites, uh, display advertising. Um, uh, you've got search there, which is pay per click. So that could be a, a text Google ad, which is based on one of those keywords. When someone types a, a search term into Google, that your ad comes up forward and foremost. Uh, SEO, which is our search engine optimization, which is where your website has a lot of content in it that is highly relevant to what someone is searching for. So Google displays you in their search engine results pages, the SERP. Uh, the other thing that you've got there is content marketing, which is blogging. So people that like to read information and absorb information, they may get awareness to what's going on in this reach phase uh, by reading one of your blogs, by absorbing some of your content. When we move into that, um, sort of the decision making phase where we're getting people they're having they're trying to act or they're trying to ascertain more information to make that purchasing decision you've got influencer outreach which is where an influencer might be posting about your brand or your product and so it draws people in it's already endorsed them so they're more inclined to make a decision social media you've got people that may share like or forward or engage with your post and therefore it's helping people make a decision uh, a landing page, which we spoke about yesterday, a landing page is a dedicated page um, to your website and a landing page doesn't have navigation in it. It is a single minded proposition that relates highly to what you are advertising. Uh, so if you are selling a particular product, the landing page doesn't talk about everything else. It talks about that product very clearly. Um, your home page can work with that. So if your brand proposition is all around an event, for example, the home page has a lot of information that is quite relevant to people, so they may go through your entire website. A product page, a specific page dedicated to a product is useful as well. Remarketing, which is the ability that if someone has seen an ad and visited your website, that they get to see your ads more frequently. Uh, so we know that we can then remarket to those people and remarketing is a very successful uh, tactic in the buyer journey 
of keeping your buyer engaged as they get to that point of conversion. Uh, and then merchandising and marketing automation. And from here on out, we start to really um, jump into some very high tech sort of avenues as to what's out there. Uh, marketing automation, for example, is where you may trigger different emails when a buyer takes a particular step in the process. Uh, so if you have a product that takes a long time to get to a purchasing decision, so some products could be six months, for example. So we know that people that are maybe purchasing a car could have a three month buying sort of journey there. Uh, for people that are buying a house, it could be six months to a year. Uh, we know that higher expensive purchases have a longer journey with it. So things like marketing automation come in handy where they've made an inquiry, then they get email EDMs that get sent out to them with different frequency to remind them to engage back with the product or the brand. Uh, it is pre-programmed. It can be quite costly to set up, but it can be very effective if you've got a longer buyer journey in the process to get to that sale. Uh, Personalisation. So again, uh, when someone fills in a form and gives you that, instead of saying, hey, thanks for your inquiry, you're saying, hi, Steve, thanks for reaching out to us, and you make it personal. You reach out to them at a personal level. Uh, Multi-channel selling, we've looked at that. So when you get to the point of making the purchase, you might be across Facebook for a sale, you might be on, uh, you know, your Google for a sale, and it might all lead back to your website. You're, you're trying to go multi-channel to make sure that you get that final sale and that final conversion. Uh, there's so there's a lot more going on there. So the engagement level, when we get back to that loyal customer, so getting back to this part where we're trying to reinvigorate and get advocacy in there going on, one of the things that we're looking at there is the onboarding process, and we spoke about that in, at the last slide. So. With this buyer journey, what we're really trying to achieve here is that when they get to the end, that they've had a really good customer experience, not just a good customer buyer journey where they've got to the sale part, but the follow up to that is that the the product over and exceeded the the standard or what they had thought in their brain to begin with, or the the user experience of coming out and having this experience in region doing something or an activity was so phenomenal that uh, they just they can't stop raving about it. So it's important to know that in, in this race model, that each level has different levels of communication that you would deploy at different stages. Um, and at the end of the day, a lot of people get to the sale and they do forget that engagement part and re-engaging that customer. Uh, it's easier to sell to someone that's purchased from you before than it is to say to sell to someone who doesn't hasn't been familiar with you to begin with. So it is good practice to, to focus also right at that bottom end of the funnel. We can't emphasize that aspect enough. Um, it is a really crucial aspect to, to getting that, the lifetime value of a buyer to increase over time. So uh, we do know that repeat customers contribute a lot to ongoing business. Any questions there? Um, no, not at this stage. I'm just happy to listen. And yeah. Yeah, I'm writing a few notes and yeah, I'll just take it all on board at this stage. Yeah, not a problem. We'll keep on tracking through. Um, we're going to move more into our mapping journey coming up, but we'll go through a few more slides here of information before we get to that point. Uh, so mapping the buyer journey, um, and this is starts to become a little bit more personal to your particular model as to what you're doing and what you're deploying. Um, and this allows you to look at what we've just spoken about, but to put it into uh, make it a bit more tangible so that you're forward thinking about this is actually my buyer journey that I typically see with people that interact with me. And so you can then identify what to communicate to them. So understanding the buyer journey really has the capacity to meet other business and marketing goals, including maximizing your sales value, getting repeat sales and your brand reach. Um, so a couple of points here to raise. One is to turn customers into repeat customers. So we just spoke a bit about that, that engage aspect, that bottom of funnel activity where we're getting advocacy going on. You have other products or services to sell, so do everything in your power to make an existing customer into a repeat customer. It's far easier than trying to close a new lead. Cross promote. Uh, what else might they be interested in? If they've made a sale with you and it's happened online, send them an email um, trying to get them to purchase again. You've probably seen this as well before when you've had an online sale in your own environment. When you've made a sale, you might get an email back from that company saying, thanks for shopping with us. Here's 10% off for the next time you shop with us again. So businesses that are doing this very well have learned where to inject value and how regular to do those communications. 
So maximizing customer value, which we just touched on. So your existing customers should be treated with some exclusivity. You offer them discounts and special offers to existing customers. Show them how important they are to your business. Another great thing to consider at this point is bundles. Bundles can be a fantastic thing to maximize customer value. Uh, so at times it's hard as a business to give discounts, uh, and we know that there are challenges in, in price cutting and things like that. But we know that that becomes a bit easier when you bundle things up into bigger units uh, so that the savings are across the board as opposed to one product as a loss leader. Our company branding initiatives, so leverage the positive experience converter customers had when interacting with your brand. Uh, encourage them to provide referrals or testimonials, uh, even ratings. So if you manage to set up a Google My Business listing as well, um, you can have an email that goes out to them and directs them, please leave us feedback with our Google listing, give us five stars. That helps persuade and validate your brand to others. So brand validation um, is, is a really key crucial aspect when other people are observing your brand externally. So when you decide to make a decision to purchase from a brand or to do something with a brand, what are some of the things that you consider? And I think one of the things that stands out from a consumer level is they're looking at other consumers' experiences of that brand. Uh, there is a lot of competition out there. So if one brand has three star rating and another has a 4.5 star rating, uh, which business would be more inclined to go with just based on seeing four and a half stars versus three? It's not to say that a three star business doesn't do good work, but if you had a choice, who would you pick? Uh, so trying to persuade um, those buyers after they've had a purchase with you to give you those referrals, to give you those testimonials, um, or to give you a five star rating. That is a fantastic way to maintain your relevance with the new audience as they come through. So mapping the buyer journey. So um, we're going to look at mapping our buyer journey using the template. And if you've got it printed out, you can have that up in front of you. But let's review the following example for a reference. Now, uh, typically this, this is a fairly involved sort of process with the, the buyer journey here. And there are a few things in uh, the sheet that we'll take a look at. And after we've had a look at this slide, I'll switch over to the sheet on my screen as well so that you can see it on screen with me and we'll talk through each of those elements. Um, you can see here there's um, at the stage there and the model that we've got here is an adaption of the race model. So we've got awareness, consideration, decision, service and loyalty. Um, so you can start to see that on the left hand side we've got the top of the funnel which is the awareness and at the far right hand side we've got to the advocacy which is our bottom of the funnel. So what we're looking at here is a few things that stand out. We've got customer actions, we've got touch points, we've got the customer experience We've got the key performance indicators or KPIs. We've got the business goals at that point, and we've got the team or the teams that are involved during that stage. Uh, so we know that a lot of businesses um, are small businesses or small to medium businesses. They may not have all of the teams involved here, but this does give you an indication to understand that in a typical buyer journey in a large scale um, business or organization, that they would have dedicated roles to some of these levels to help do that through. Uh, so kudos to the small to medium business owners out there that are doing a lot of this stuff on their own, as we know that's a lot to cover. Uh, so if we look at this awareness, the customer action is to view an online ad, or they may see a social media campaign, or they may hear about something from their friend. The touch points that they might have with that is traditional media, so they may have seen the, an ad on TV, for example. Um, and a lot of TV ads, you notice, uh, fairly time sensitive and time urgent. Uh, you might see you need to get your car serviced and you might be thinking at the time, actually, I do need to get my car serviced. So relevance can be quite high. The customer experience there is they're interested, but they may be hesitant because they're not quite sure what's what just yet. The key performance indicator is the number of people reached. So at this level, the objective is to reach as many people as possible. So your business goal is to increase that awareness and to increase that interest. And the team that you would typically have deployed to do that is the marketing or communications team. They're the people in your team that would typically know how to go out and target as many people as possible. When we get to the next stage, our consideration stage, the customer action here is they're conducting research, they're researching competitors, they're comparing features and pricing. Um, and they're doing, they're just digging in and getting all the details, all the nitty gritty. Some of their touch points, it would be uh, word of mouth. So they may have seen an ad, but then they've spoken to a friend that said, oh, if you're looking at that brand, also take a look at this one. So they keep digging through word of mouth. 
Uh, they may go through websites, they may do social media, they may do some Google Google searching. At this point, they're a bit more curious and they're a bit more excited because obviously that awareness has led to some level of curiosity that's moved them into a buying process here that they may make a purchasing decision. Uh, the key performance indicator for your business that you would look at is that you have new website visitors. So typically this person that comes to your website is the first time they've come there, they're a new person to experience this. Um, a business goal would be then to say if this has been successful, we've got an increase in website visitors at that time. And this is where you get a bit of a crossover in your team from marketing and communications over to the sales team. Uh, typically a sales team is responsible for the product and product offering. The marketing team is responsible for communicating that product out. And this is where we get a bit of a crossover between those two teams typically where marketing could say to a salesperson, hey, do you have more information about that product that I can use to market to help people make a decision? Because uh, I know people are looking for more information. In the middle here, we've got the decision stage, which is where a customer action is to actually make a purchase. This is the physical transaction as to what goes on. Uh, so that customer, that's where they get out the credit card, they get out their wallet uh, and money exchanges hands. The touch points as to where this can occur is it could be through a website, it could be a mobile app, so they've done it through a mobile app. They may have done it on their phone as a purchase. Um, they may have called you and in some circumstances, as we know, uh, is, is still happening quite a bit, is it may happen in person. This person at that point is quite excited because they've just made the decision to purchase something and they're going to receive something at, at the end of it. Uh, the key performance indicator at this level is the conversion rate and the number of online sales that you get. So how many people made a purchase, how many people converted and how big was the sale? So the, a business goal that you might have at this level is that you want an increase of the conversion rate. So if your conversion rate is out of 100 people that come to you, your sales page, only two of those people have made a purchase, you've got a 2% conversion rate you might want to say, I really think we should have a 10% conversion rate or a bigger conversion rate. Uh, and you might want to see an increase in online sales. Uh, so again, you might deploy a bundle here. So buy this and get this for this, which increases the chance of a sale. Um, and you might want to see an increase of online sales for that as a business goal. So the teams involved here typically would be online development. So people that work in the website that make sure that works well, your sales, your marketing, and now your customer service is involved because we know that someone's then going to say, hello, thank you for purchasing with us. We're so glad you made that decision. If you have any questions, please reach out. So we move now from that into that service side of the model here, uh, where we're at that real bottom part of the funnel where the rubber meets the road. So the customer actions here is they're receiving a product or they're receiving a service or they're going on a paid experience. Uh, they've got custom contact with customer service. They're actually speaking with a physical person at that point or they're having direct communications with customer service. Uh, they're reading a product or service documentation. So any of the stuff that's come in the packaging has come back to them and they're looking at that. Um, you might also notice too that some brands are really phenomenal at their unboxing experience. Uh, so when you get a product in the mail and in the first time that you open it, the experience of opening that product is phenomenal. And as a result of that, it makes you feel more proud that you purchased that product, that you made that decision and makes you more inclined to talk about that with other people as well, leading to that loyalty and advocacy. Some of the touch points that might happen here is it could be on the phone, they may call. It could be a chatbot, so they may be asking questions through the chatbot about the product or service. And a chatbot is one of those uh, quick chats that pop up on your website that give direct comms that some of it could be an automated response or it could put you directly in contact with someone on the other end. Uh, some people have that set up on their website. And then email, they may be emailing you direct. Uh, at the end of making the purchase, they would have received your email and they've sent you an email. They may be asking some questions, they may have some queries. Um, a customer experience here could be very mixed. So if the service was really good and the product was really good and the, uh, the delivery of that customer service was fantastic, they will be extremely satisfied. But a lot of the times, um, and you probably find this yourself, some people get quite frustrated at this point where what they purchase may not have met their expectation. Uh, and if it hasn't met their expectation, it's very hard to get loyalty out of those people. So it's important to emphasize that at this part of the buyer journey, that when someone is actually undertaking uh, the service delivery of what they've purchased, that that's your, a, a big moment to shine. Some of the KPIs here that stand out, those key performance indicators, we've got product reviews. 
uh, getting those five stars, customer service success rate. Uh, so customers that are giving you um, testimonials and things like that, or the waiting time, how long did they have to wait to receive a product? Uh, we know that there's a lot of logistics and frameworks with there's shipping and drop shipping and all these things out there. How fast did we get the product into those people's hands or how easy was it to get the service delivery that they paid for? Uh, some of the business goals here could be increasing your customer service satisfaction. So you might identify, we want to be the best of the best in this space. Uh, and you may also then identify, we really want to reduce that wait time. So if we know that I've got all this, this amazing model, but people are waiting three months to get access to it, um, which you can see a lot of uh, right now during COVID, that is definitely something that's quite relevant. Uh, you might try to minimize that wait time. Uh, at the, with the teams that are involved, you really get into the people that are doing the, the customer service or the customer success, so the people that are delivering on the product. Uh, so if you're a tourism operator, it could be a ranger that's going out and taking tour groups on a guide. They're the person that are delivering the product that's been paid for. Uh, so their performance really uh, leads heavily into whether you get customer loyalty at the end of the buyer journey. So if we look at loyalty, uh, a customer action in loyalty is that they make another purchase or they share the experience, that they send that on to other people. Uh, some of the touch points that we've got here is there's word of mouth, so they're talking about this. Social media, they're sharing it through either their messenger groups or they're sharing it on their page or they're promoting it in their newsfeed. Uh, or they may go on a review site. They may go on uh, Google and give you a five star rating. They may use another website like Trustpilot or something like that, that also aggregates ratings. A loyal customer, someone at that level, they would be satisfied and they would be excited. So we know that someone that gets to that point, if they're undertaking that activity, we know that they're a very satisfied customer and that they're excited about what they received. Uh, some of the key performance indicators at that level is the retention rate, the customer satisfaction score. So um, if you're retaining a high rate of your customers, you know that you're doing quite well in your service delivery if they're becoming quite loyal. You might have a customer satisfaction score. Um, other places call different phrases for this. Um, you might hear common in the banking a net promoter score or, or an NPS score. Uh, things like that. So how much do those people promote us out there? That's a customer satisfaction score that we're chasing. Uh, business goals, you might be trying to generate positive reviews there. You might be increasing your retention rate as a business goal. And the team involves could be that online development, the people that are responsible for sharing that information back onto your website, into your digital landscape. Customer service, they may use that to talk to a new customer to say, hey, we've had five customers come through, they gave us a five star rating. And um, customer success. So a customer success would be um, a person in your team, if you have a large team that might say celebrating all the wins. So when they have a win, they share that customer success as much as possible and they advocate for that. So what we'll do is um, let's open up the sheet that you've got there, the worksheet, the activity sheet. I'm going to stop this screen and I'm going to point it over to a different screen that's got it. So just bear with me one second here while I get there. Uh, and we'll just talk through the activity sheet and you can start to slowly fill this one out as we're talking. Um, so what we've got here is our buyer journey mapping sheet. Uh, let me know if you can't see it on the screen there. No, it's, uh, it's all good. Perfect. So as you can see from the last slide that we went through, this is quite similar in that format. So this is to become personal um, to what you're doing as a business in particular. So what we're looking at here is the awareness. So you can notice we put the word stranger underneath aware awareness because uh, this person has had zero interaction with you. So what is the lead thinking or what are they feeling? Uh, who from the company is the lead hearing from or talking to? So at the awareness level, what are they lead thinking or feeling? They could be browsing. Um, and they could have been on social media just browsing and came across a cool product or they read a cool post of someone advocating or promoting your product. Uh, so who in the company is the lead hearing from or talking to? At the awareness stage, are they hearing from anyone? Uh, are they just hearing from your uh, Facebook account? Are they just hearing from your website or a landing page? Have they had any contact with anyone? And what content from the business is the lead interacting with? What are they doing? Are they getting something from Facebook or Instagram or Google Ads or the website? Or are they not getting any of those and they're getting this from traditional or the phone rings or they may find you in a printed ad somewhere or, or on radio or TV? 
what can we do to expedite the process? So how do we move them from awareness to consideration? What is a, is there anything we can do to speed that up? And what can we do to make the lead more comfortable in decision making? So is there anything we can do to promote them to move forward? So just take a few minutes here to fill in for your particular um, business, what you think uh, something could be for each of those. So in the consideration, what is the lead thinking or feeling? Well, they're probably researching, looking at other options, uh, or maybe you're the only one in the area that has that product and maybe you're it. And if that's the case, um, they're, they're just trying to dig down whether or not they're going to make the purchase or not. Uh, as we do know, in some of our regional areas, we do get some of those businesses that are the unique business in that area. They're the only offering for that in that region. Uh, again, where are they getting the content in those phases and what can you do to expedite the process? Uh, so you might be saying in consideration, you want to give them as much information as possible. Uh, you might give them 10 quick tips about your product that helps make the conversion point quicker. What are some things you could be doing there that are helping with that? Um, conversion, so the marketing qualified lead. So what we're saying is all the advertising and activity that you've done has now got someone that's either making a purchase or they've filled in your form or they've tried to register for an event or they've made a booking for something. Uh, that's what you're after there. Um, and at that point, who are they hearing from? And again, I think we've already touched on this. Chances are in the small businesses, uh, the person could be hearing from one person through a lot of this process. Uh, that's not uncommon. It is quite common. Um, they may be hearing from two different people in the process. Uh, if you're a family operated business, it could be a couple of people. Uh, if you're a, a small to medium business where you've got a, a few employees and, and the size of your business scale grows, uh, you might have people that are dedicated to some of the different divisions as to what you're doing. So different people would be responsible throughout. Uh, loyalty, so we're looking at a sales qualified lead. So now we've got the person that's made the purchase and they're receiving the product and they're getting excited because they've had a great customer experience um, and advocacy which is where you know the deal is closed, they've had made the sale and now they're promoting that and keeping it back in or they're coming back to make a, another purchase. So I'll just give you a few minutes to work through there. Shout out if you've got any questions at all. Just let me know how much time you might need on that one there, Brenda. Yeah, probably not a lot. Um, with my business, I'm stuck between two worlds. Um, yep. Pre-COVID one where, um, yeah, the other partner in the business was an industry expert. So all the awareness um, through the loyalty advocacy was a given. Um, we just traded on that continuously, but then circumstances have changed with COVID. People were flying in from overseas and interstate to do our training. So now we've got to change direction and offer something more close to home, um, mm -hmm. more local stuff. So whether the old business will continue i don't know but the new stuff would have to be new products new branding new everything so um yeah so you're working take... very much at that top of funnel and middle of funnel again so back at that awareness yeah. stage and into that yeah. consideration yeah, yeah back to the beginning for the new one um yeah. everything i've done so far has been absolutely brilliant it's got my brain really thinking um but with the old business, it probably doesn't hurt to revisit this. And instead of taking too much for granted yeah. to yeah, put some of these other things in action and re-advertise, re-associate with the people who haven't been able to get back because they haven't been able to fly into state and stuff. Yeah, and I, I think you've made a really good point there too, which is, I think, important to highlight. Um, and what, what you find is people that are doing um, something and they're doing it well, they tend to focus then on what they're doing well. Um, so, for example, like you just mentioned, uh, if you're doing the loyalty and advocacy well, you tend then not to focus on other areas of the business because of that, because what you've got working is working. Um, and I think it's really important to be holistic in the view of activity that you're doing. So even if uh, a business is absolutely crushing it at one part and the referral chain is really, really good, 
as you said, COVID presents an opportunity or it can present a really big challenge where all of a sudden that advocacy is not doing what it did previously. And I think one of the biggest buzzwords that you see, which is heavy in the buyer journey, is pivot. And everyone's telling their business will have to pivot and find a way in which they're going to keep moving forward and doing something different. And I think that um, business resilience, if you see in this buyer journey, if there was activity happening at all of those stages, a business would be more resilient to some of those external factors as a result of that. And this is where digital uh, tactics can really help and aid in that process. It can really provide a bit of a stable framework that you know that you're tracking on all of those things so that you've got more insight into what you're doing. Um, so a couple of the tips that come out of that that we can look at for mapping your buyer journey is really to keep it simple. One of the things that you notice um, out there is that sales decline, um, decline rapidly when there's a level of complexity. So when you look at a, a purchasing decision that you've made and you've done it online, what made it easy? Uh, keeping it simple, what were the ones that you thought, oh, that was good? Was it the one that took you 20 minutes to get through all of the detail pages and to get your shipping details in there and to do all of this stuff? Or was it the one that just made it easy? Um, keeping it simple is a really great strategy. Uh, although it can be really hard to implement. So when you're looking at your, your mapping for your buyer journey, try and keep it as simple as possible. And if you focus on keeping it simple throughout, it can really help. Uh, the content really needs to be clear and concise. Keep it as user friendly without any jargon. When content becomes overly technical or overly complicated, it's where you get a higher bound rate and people leave. So you want to make it as tangible as possible for, for your customer. So, you don't want to be talking about a product in its most technical specs all the time. You want to be talking more conversational. Uh, we do know that it does trend, especially in Australia, that people are more conversational and when they talk about a product, they'd like to be spoken to in that conversational tone. So you need to keep it clear and concise and nice and uh, conversational. Use data where you can. So if you have all of this stuff set up and you know that you've got all these things in place, conversion rates, visits, clicks, they give you really good insight into how things are happening in your buyer journey and where you should be spending your time. A lot of people, um, you hear it from time to time and we hear it all the time, my engagement rate is really, really great, but they don't have any sales. Uh, and so they're focused heavily on this engagement number that tells them how many people have experienced an ad on Facebook, but they actually didn't get any sales. And for us, that's a bit of a big indicator because we would think if they've got a really big engagement rate, they should have some sales. Um, and if those sales aren't coming and it's not connected, we know that something's not quite right in that process and we need to focus on what that is and correct that. Data is invaluable in mapping out your buyer journey. It really shows you where to focus your energies and your efforts. Amend as you learn. Um, so digital isn't perfect. Uh, none of the buyer journey is perfect and it is always changing and evolving. As you learn something, amend what you're doing. Um, don't make a big list of everything that you want to improve and then implement it at the end of the year. Make these macro adjustments as things are going. Uh, small improvements continually lead to a bigger improvement at the end of the year, rather than saying next year I will do this. Uh, your buyer journey is a dynamic asset that should be updated and modified as you gain new insights. So visit it regularly to help you identify any new gaps that you need to fill with helpful content. Uh, so sometimes you may have realised I need to be doing more of this, but you don't know enough about it. Go and learn about it. There's a lot of free stuff online that you can search about any particular topic, especially these topics we're talking about today. You can search any one of those on Google and you'll find a multitude of articles and, and free blogs that give you information on how to do those things better. Tailor your call to actions. Uh, I know we've been in acronym land a lot, ladies. So CTAs is call to actions to achieve your desired results. So when someone is engaged with something, what are we asking them to do? Do you just want them to learn more, shop now, buy now, add to cart? What is the call to action? What is that final piece of words that you're asking them to do? Do you have a button that goes with it? You want to tailor those to be in line with the expectation of what you're asking that person to do in the buyer journey. Uh, and it's important to use active language in call to A's that is commonly understood, but where you can personalise and customise the call to action on each page to the state of which is likely to fall in your user's journey. So from Facebook, it might be better to have learn more or read more so they can find out more product information if they're at that awareness level. Uh, when they're on the landing page, they may have learned about all of the service or the product and they might say, hey, make a purchase, add to cart or buy now or let's go. Or as uh, we mentioned in one of our previous sessions, 
they may want more information. So you may give them a downloadable form or a downloadable PDF. And when they go to download that PDF, they give us their information so that you get their email address and their phone number so you can make the sale over email later. Depending on what your product is and what you're selling and how you're doing that, you'll deploy a different tactic to get to that, that buyer, depending on where they are in their buyer journey. So by mapping that out accurately, it gives you a lot of clear insight as to what you should do and how to customize it. Um, and we're sort of at the summary phase here. So in summary, keeping your buyer journey in mind when creating content will help you ensure it will support your marketing efforts. Uh, it will also increase your content's effectiveness and performance as you build trust and strong relationships with your prospective customers as they search for answers. Uh, developing top of mind awareness when they arrive at that all important decision um, stage as well is crucial. So I think what we've covered here quite well is that holistically we should be looking at a buyer journey, not as just the point where they make the sale, but collectively across the whole journey that it's important to address the buyer where they're at at each of those stages. It's also important to note that in the buyer journey, there's a lot of different digital things that you can deploy at each level to really make maximum impact and get maximum value for what you're doing as an activity. Uh, and outside of that, continually learn, continually try to evolve and adapt from the insights that you're seeing. It makes a really big difference in the activity that you're undertaking. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the buyer journey. Um, any questions at all? Not that I can think of right now, no. Um, yeah, I've taken in a lot over the last couple of days, so I'm still digesting it all, but I will go through all this stuff again and then email if I've got specific questions. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and thanks for bearing with us through all of the sessions that we've had so far. You've uh, been an absolute champion. You've been online for quite a while there uh, over the past couple of days. Uh, so I've really enjoyed um, talking you through what we've got. And if you do happen to come to one of the sessions later in the week, you'll see me up there. Okay, excellent. No, that's been very good. Uh, thank excellent you so much. Excellent program. I uh, appreciate the feedback. Thank you so much. No, thank you. No worries.